Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a repeating pattern in Illustrator that is based on the wedding ring quilting pattern. Before we get started, let's have a look and see the pattern that we're going to create. This is a little bit of a tricky pattern, but it's an interesting one to create in Illustrator. And it's loosely based on the Wedding Rings quilt pattern, which is a pattern that quilters use. So this is what we're aiming for, and let's get started creating this pattern. I have a new document here that's a thousand points by a thousand points in size, but it doesn't really matter how big your document is because we're creating a pattern. I'm going to start with just a black stroke and no fill, and I'm going to start with a circle. So I'm going to click the ellipse tool, and I'm just going to click in my document because I want a circle that's 200 by 200 points in size or thereabouts. And now what I'm going to do is put a stroke on this circle and I'm going to put a stroke on it that is about probably about 14 points. I tend to use an even number. I think it works a little better that way. With this stroke, I'm going to check and make sure that the stroke is going to be aligned to the center so that it's centered over the edge of the shape. It's not on the very inside. It's not on the very outside. It's centered over it. That's pretty important for lining everything up later on. Now with my first circle created, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and drag two more circles away. So all three circles are identical. Now I haven't yet worked out a better way of doing this than just trial and error, but I have a pretty good trial and error solution for you. So first of all, I'm just going to place these circles roughly where I think they should go. I'm going to select them all and I'm going to first of all vertically align their centers. I want to make sure that their centers are all on the same line. And then I'm going to click Horizontal Distribute Center and that makes sure that the space between these two circles is the same as the space between these two. Now I'm going to select all my circles. I'm going to choose Object, Transform, Rotate and I'm going to rotate them through 90 degrees and click Copy. Now this is what I'm looking for. The shape's not right yet, but it's pretty near right. And so I'm going to show you how you can make it better. What you're going to do is you're going to take each of these outside circles and you're going to move them out a certain amount. And you're going to move them outwards the same amount as each other. So I'm going to start with, I think something like seven here. So I'm just pressing the arrow key seven times. I press the down arrow key for this one because it has to go in a downwards direction. This one has to go in this direction. And this one has to go upwards. And I think they can all go out a little bit more. So I'm going to try one more. Making sure that they all go in the correct direction. I still think that they need another one. And I'd probably try another one just to see if there was an extra point of movement here or whether I'd actually started to split the circles apart. So I think they're pretty near touching here, but you might want to test it again with another rotation. Now I just paused the video and tested another rotation. It's breaking up here, but all the others are pretty close. So I'm thinking that perhaps I've got a good setting. Now once you've got this, I'm going to start taking it apart again. So I'm going to take off the pieces that I just rotated to create. So there's a second copy in the middle. And now I'm going back to my original three. I'm going to double check that their centers are all on the same plane. And I'm going to double check their spacing. And that was out a little bit. It's not surprising. You might find that you move them a little bit incorrectly. Now let's try our Object Transform Rotate again and click Copy. And these are looking pretty good. I think that they're pretty near to touching. So let's call this good and let's go on with our pattern. I'm going to select all these shapes and from the Pathfinder, which you can get to by choosing Window and then Pathfinder, I'm going to select this Divide option because I want to divide this into its component pieces and then Object Ungroup. So now I have a lot of different pieces that I can start coloring to create my pattern. 
With the Selection tool, I'm going to select over each of these pieces to start recoloring them. First of all, actually let's go and put red strokes on all of them because I was using a red stroke before and I kind of like that effect. So let's have a bright red stroke and now I'm going to take this path here and I'm going to fill it with black. So let's bring the fill color forward and let's go and start filling it with black or a very dark gray here. I'm going to do that to all these pieces here. And then these were filled with a sort of aqua color. And then there's a piece in here that may be a little bit difficult to get to. It's this piece here. I can get to it, however, by selecting the entire shape. And I'm going to my Shape Builder tool. And if I just click in here, I'm going to make sure that I create this shape. I'm going to click outside. And now I can select this shape and color it. And I'm going to make it a sort of gold color. So here's the beginning of our pattern here. But if we tried to make a pattern out of this right now, it would fail spectacularly. I'm going to press Control-0 so that we can see our workspace. I'm going to select the Selection tool and I'm going to move this entire shape up in this direction. And then I'm going to select it and holding Alt or Option, I'm going to drag a second copy of it away. And I'm going to add as I do that the Shift key because that means that I'm now moving it in a perfectly horizontal line. And I want to stop when I'm at the intersect point where I see all those intersect green lines appear. And I'm just going to let go the left mouse button and then let go the remainder of the buttons I had hold down. Now here, the thing that's causing this pattern to not look correct is this blue piece here. But if I just delete it, you can see that now I'm getting my pattern is appearing correctly. Now I need to make a few more copies. So I'm going to select over all of these pieces again. And again, holding the Alt key so I'm making a copy, I'm going to start dragging downwards. And I'm going to add the Shift key to make sure that I drag perfectly downwards. I'm going to stop when I've got everything nicely aligned, when that intersect is happening again for me. And then I'm just going to let go my left mouse button and then let go the Shift and the Alt keys. Now we've got the similar problem happening here is that these blue shapes are now over the top of what's underneath. So I'm just going to select them and press Delete. You can see here that we're missing a shape in the center. We can create that again with the Shape Builder tool if we like by just clicking on here and creating that shape. Now I'm going to select the shape and I'm going to fill it with the correct gold color. Now right now, again, if we try and make this as a pattern, it's not going to quite work. We have to clean it up a little bit before we go. First of all, I'm going to take out this piece and then I'm going to take out this piece too. I'm going to take these two top pieces off as well. And I'm going to start copying these yellow pieces to fill in these gaps. And then when I fill in the gaps, I've got exactly what I want for my pattern. So I'm going to click here, Shift click here, and then I'm going to click on the Alt key or press the Alt key as I drag these shapes out of the way because they're headed down here. I need to be really careful that I line these up really well. So I'm looking for these intersect lines. And when I get them, I let go the left mouse button and then, and only then, let go the other buttons that I have pressed. And now I need just this piece or this piece, it wouldn't really matter which, in here. So I'm going to select it, hold the Alt key to start making a copy, add the Shift key to make sure I'm working in a perfectly horizontal direction. Make sure I've got it lined up perfectly. Let go the left mouse button. Let go the other keys. Now this is the basis of my pattern. This will allow me to create a proper pattern. I'm going to select over these shapes. And now let's go and create our pattern by choosing Object, Pattern, Make. I'll click OK. 
Now the pattern's not quite right yet, but it's going to be in a minute. Let's just go and get the Pattern Options dialog. We're going to choose the Grid option and all we're going to do is close up the gaps here. So I'm going to click here to make sure that I change the width and height at the same time just because it's going to be a little bit quicker. And I'm just going to press the down arrow key and start bringing these shapes in together. If I press the Shift key as I press the down arrow key, I'll go in bigger quantities. And I'm just looking to make sure that these shapes are going to overlap really neatly. Now before I go, you can see that we have a slight problem here. We're not getting this full circle. Well, we can change that by clicking here and bringing the bottom in front. And if your sides were not right, you could check and see if you perhaps needed to choose a overlap that had right in front rather than left in front. But left in front's correct and bottom in front is correct for this. Now all I'm going to do is just tweak this a little bit and just make sure that these pattern pieces are exactly over each other and as soon as I see white elements starting to appear I know that I've gone too far and the pattern is not correct. So once I've got it I'm going to click Done and that creates the pattern piece here in Illustrator. I'm going to take this element and just tuck it out of the way for the moment. I want it there just in case I need to make changes. Now I'm going to create a rectangle the size of the artboard. I have a script that does that quickly for me. If you want to learn how to do that, have a look at my other video. I have one on scripting in Illustrator. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to move this rectangle the size of the artboard up to the top layer here so it's all by itself. Just makes it a little easier for me to see what's going on. I'm going to select this layer, I'm going to click on the fill here and I'm going to click on my brand new pattern fill and it's now filling this rectangle. Let's see how it's going to scale. Object Transform Scale. Now I don't want to scale my object so I'm going to disable this option but I do want to scale my pattern. And because I have Preview turned on, we can have a look and see how the pattern is scaling. Now we're seeing a few little lines in here. That's because of Illustrator and trying to appear on a monitor. But you'll find those lines don't appear in the finished element. And if you zoomed into those, they wouldn't actually be lines anyway. So you can see here is our pattern that we've created. It's based on the wedding pattern, which I said was a quilting pattern. And it's a really nice little pattern to create in Illustrator. And it's giving you an opportunity to really come to terms with how to create quite complex patterns. Of course, if we want this pattern to be available once we leave Illustrator, we're going to want to save it. So we'd empty out the swatches panel and go and save this as a swatch by clicking Save Swatch Library as AI and then saving it as a swatch. So we could open it and use it again in another project. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.